If you're someone who's trying to break into data science, you probably have heard the importance of having a data science portfolio. Now, whether you've had never written a data science portfolio project before, or you've had a few solid ones under your belt, we've all had those moments where we kind of just lost a source of inspiration, or you don't know where to find the right data, or you don't know what your next topic will be. Today's video is dedicated towards four methods that you can use today to help you brainstorm a data science portfolio that will guarantee to get you that next data science interview. Before we get started, my name is Maggie. I am a recent grad from University of Toronto, and I'm working as data scientist in the logistics tech startup space. If you're new here, make sure you also check out my Instagram account at Maggie and Data, where I post daily data science content. I actually also talk quite a bit about my data science portfolio that helped me got my current job over there at Instagram. So what is a data science portfolio and why is it so important? A data science portfolio is public evidence of your data science skills. Examples are building an algorithm from scratch, research new methods, or conducting meaningful analysis using real world data. The reason why data science portfolio is so important is because in this field of work, employers want to see a strong aptitude for data science in their new hire, but this skill isn't always easy to demonstrate in interviews. According to a recent study, a single bad hire will cost a company on average $15,000, and it generally takes six months for companies to break even on new hires. So let's say you are hired and you find out two months later that you're not a good fit for the company, for the position, if you want to do something about deep learning, but the only thing that this company does is A-B testing, then the company is essentially losing money by hiring you um, for quitting so early. By building a data science portfolio, you can demonstrate those skills, you can demonstrate which areas of data science you have the most expertise in, and that will allow the hiring manager really easily see whether your skill sets match the qualification for the job that you're applying to. Now that we've covered our basis about data science portfolios, the first techniques, and I would probably argue the most important one is to build your data science portfolio project out of passion. So for me personally, I always cared about social inequality issues. One of my majors in school was human geography, and I took a lot of courses on urban segregation, on housing affordability and income disparity. And combined with my other major in statistics, I was in a powerful position where I can leverage big data and my analytic skills with big data to raise public awareness on those issues to use easy to understand data visualization techniques um, and communicate with the public about the findings from data. Now, because I graduated in April 2021 in the midst of the pandemic, I actually spent a lot of time working on COVID related projects. In one of my projects, I built a interactive core plath map that is hosted publicly and allowed people in the city of Toronto to visualize how COVID-19 is being spread in the city of Toronto. I really cared about this project because when I was talking to family and friends, um, I realized that the only source of information that they had about COVID during lockdown was media. And this data-driven visualization was able to help them answer questions such as, are there many cases in my area or in my neighborhood? And is it safe for me to go out and get groceries? Another project that I worked on was about COVID mortality in the province of Quebec in Canada. I was able to gather publicly available COVID mortality data from the government of Quebec coupled with demographic characteristics such as age group and gender. I used Bayesian inference techniques with a semi-parametric smooth time trend line to fit a Poisson model that helped me answer the question how COVID-19 disproportionately affected different groups of people. Now, if none of that Bayesian stuff makes sense to you, that is okay. My point is that the projects that are born out of passion are really, really powerful because Recruiters and hiring managers love to see that the candidates care more about just coding and just getting a job. They want to see the human side of you and if your projects are about something that you deeply care about, that passion will shine through when you speak with them during your interviews and they can make a huge impact. Now, if you're not quite sure what your passion is or if you're still in the exploration phase, then the second technique is for you, which is to find your topic based on data. Since most of the time data are very messy or incomplete, it is actually quite common for a project to start with data. Once you see what data you can get, or once you can see the columns or the schemas in a data set, then you can start formulating ideas on what you want to do with it, and at the very least, how you can clean it to make it useful to potential stakeholders. I'm sharing with you six data sources that provide good quality free data that just might help you with your next project. So number one is GitHub. 
there are a lot of really good data on GitHub. The downside of it is that you do have to search for them and it might take some time to find the data that you're looking for. The second source is government websites. In Canada, I used a lot of data from Statistics Canada and I used a lot of data from City of Toronto. I also know that Toronto Police Service has their own open data portal, which has some crime statistics. In the US, that is US Census Bureau and data.gov. In the UK, it's data.gov.uk and UK Data Service. In Europe, that is European Union Open Data Portal. The third site is other organizations that might be able to provide free data, such as the World Health Organization and NASA. They both have really, really good data sources. The fourth one is Google Cloud. Google provides a set of free publicly available data to their users. I know I was able to get flight delay information and daily weather historical data from Google. The fifth one is Kago. A lot of the data on Kago is really good for machine learning training. Just be aware to stay away from those ones that are overused such as Titanic prediction. And the last one, of course, don't forget that you can always scrape your own data. Uh, sentiment analysis from Twitter is quite common, or you can scrape millions of business review data on Yelp. Moving on to the next method. The third technique that I share with you is for those of you who are already working with data at work and you want to break into the field of data science, but you just don't have the titles yet. And it is what would you automate at work if given the chance? For example, let's say you currently use pivot table in Excel and can you find the equivalent function in Python that can help you automate your workflow and improve efficiency. This applies to any menu process that your boss might want you to do at work and that you can think of ways to improve on. I know work data is oftentimes proprietary, so you can find similar data from one of the sites that's mentioned before and build a portfolio project and compelling story around it. Projects that come from this source of inspiration is also very, very powerful because the hiring managers can see that you strive for growth and constant improvements, which are two of the most important qualities among data scientists. Last but not least, if you've exhausted all the techniques above and still can't find data for your next project, then I hope you find this fourth method useful about finding inspiration from others. If you're someone who's gone to grad school or someone who has general research backgrounds, a good resource to turn into is academic research paper. You can read about all the new and improved methods and algorithms that people have poured years of their lives into and the research questions that they have answered. Or if you're not too technically driven, just looking for some simple data cleaning projects, or you don't have access to academic paper, then blogs are your best friends. One source that I highly recommend is Medium, an online publishing platform where a lot of data science professionals write about project tutorials with real code snippets. Three specific channels towards data science, towards AI, and analytics of India have personally helped me a lot. This is the end of the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find this video helpful. Give it a thumbs up and comment down below what your favorite sources are for finding inspirations for data science portfolio projects and I'll see you in the next video.